Hello everyone, I would like to welcome you all to today's lecture. I hope you uh, went through the contents of the last lecture. We will briefly look at what we did uh, in the last class. We introduced the uh, reagent uh, which is uh, allyl silane and of course uh, we discussed that uh, we can generate uh, anion alpha to the silicon. Uh, whether the uh, substrate is of any kind you can generate an anion uh, alpha to the silicon. But we gave more emphasis uh, on the uh, fact that we can react uh, uh, the allyl silanes with an electrophile in such a fashion that uh, the uh, carbocation is uh, formed at the uh, beta carbon atom and therefore if electrophile interacts uh, with the double bond uh, at the gamma position. So, this is alpha, this is beta and this is the gamma position. So, this is alpha, this is beta and this is the gamma position. Then you generate a carbocation at the uh, beta position and then we discussed that the uh, stability of such kind of uh, uh, cations at the beta position with respect to silicon are stabilized. Uh, because of the uh, hyperconjugation between the carbon silicon sigma bond and the MTP orbital. And then we did uh, see a few reactions and uh, we uh, also uh, looked at that the uh, reactions of such allyl silanes take place with stabilized carbocations which include allyl cation, benzyl cation or tertiary butyl cations. And of course, we saw the mechanism of it that how does the uh, overlap of the carbon silicon bond with the MTP orbital allows the geometry of the product to be formed. Then uh, we also looked at that allyl silanes uh, can also react uh, uh, at the gamma position of uh, that substitution uh, uh, with uh, uh, alpha beta unsaturated aldehydes and uh, also alpha beta unsaturated ketone. So, we uh, checked accordingly that the reaction occurs in the presence of a Lewis acid, but the uh, alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde gives the um, uh, 1, 2 addition product that means of this kind here where the uh, allyl group reacts onto the carbonyl itself and double bond remains as it is. Uh, on the other hand, if we take a alpha beta unsaturated ketone and then of course the Michael addition does take place and then you get addition of the allyl silane and we saw that you can generate uh, an enolate and this can either uh, react with the proton to form the addition product in this fashion uh, or where the uh, proton comes in here. So that means this can react with uh, the proton here uh, or, or it can react with an electrophile. So, it can give the addition of the uh, carbon uh, electrophile bond and this is the 1, 4 addition or Michael addition product. So, 1, 4 addition or Michael addition product and such reactions are uh, called as Sakurai reaction. We also saw that uh, generally uh, the reaction uh, does not uh, tolerate the Bronsted acids except we had one uh, exceptional case of, uh, of an intramolecular cyclization using methane sulfonic acid. Otherwise normally you need a Lewis acid for such reactions to take place. So now uh, we look at uh, some more aspects of this allyl silane based chemistry. And that is uh, allyl silanes in multi-component reactions. For example, if we take uh, uh, this particular um, substrate which uh, um, is basically not an allyl silane but it is a vinyl silane. However, it is very interesting because now we have another moiety uh, in the su substrate here in the starting compound which is uh, triethyl silyl ether. So, this is the triethyl silyl ether as we have written here. 
that uh, reacts with an aldehyde in the presence of a Lewis acid like bismuth tribromide uh, and uh, at in dichloromethane at room temperature and it gives an interestingly uh, such kind of uh, uh, product which is a single diastereomer as you can see that this and this uh, are uh, pointing to the same direction that is beta direction. Now uh, the rationalization of this reaction has been done uh, which uh, leads to uh, a so called oxocarbonium ion 1 I will discuss it with, the, with it and uh, basically it is a vinyl silane and therefore we need uh, first to understand the, the um, chemistry of the vinyl silane. And then uh, it after the first carbocation is formed or oxocarbonium ion is formed, oxocarbonium ion is formed then it leads to another oxocarbonium ion 2 which is what uh, allows uh, the revealing of an allyl silane and that allows the uh, cyclization uh, to um, uh, undergo to form the final product. So, we will see it is a very interesting reaction. So, what is happening is that you have this particular uh, starchy material in which you have triethylsilyl ether. So, when this reacts with uh, an aldehyde in presence of a Lewis acid then we can expect an interaction of this type where first the Lewis acid uh, uh, interacts with the aldehydic oxygen to make this part carbon more electrophilic on which the silyl ether uh, attacks in this particular fashion to lead to this particular ionic intermediate which then releases this oxonium ion which has this vinyl silyl moiety. Also of course we will be releasing the triethylsiloxy anion. Now this particular oxonium ion having vinyl silane which is shown here undergoes what is called as oxonia cope rearrangement leading to this kind of allyl silane derivative. Now this allyl silane derivative as you can see that can undergo easily pi cation cyclization the way I have shown uh, in such a fashion that we generate a carbocation or on this particular position which is a beta position with respect to the silicon and therefore there is a stability of the cation by beta uh, silicon effect. Now we can write the transition state uh, in this particular fashion where R1 and the phenyl groups are equatorially oriented which then eventually by the loss of this carbon silicon bond and the cyclization here to form this CC bond leads to this particular cyclic uh, olefin. Now we can uh, write it the same thing in a slightly different way as uh, you can see it here that this is what the vinyl silane that we started with um, here uh, this part uh, and of course then once the oxonia cope rearrangement occurs we can uh, think about uh, getting a, a transition state of this kind in which now we have the phenyl group and the R1 group being equatorial. So they are equatorially oriented here. The other possibility is that we can orient the uh, phenyl group as uh, axial and let the R1 group being equatorial. So you have equatorial and then you have an axial. Then in the transition state, this is the transition state in which now this is uh, uh, axially oriented and this is equatorial oriented. Then we will get a product like this in which the phenyl group and R1 are the uh, on the opposite side of the cyclic structure. On the other hand here we get this and this uh, substituents on the same side of the product. So obviously this transition state is more stable than this transition state and therefore this is not formed and this is the product that is formed. With now we can look at the intramolecular Sakurai reaction to provide cyclic enone of this kind. When a substrate of this kind in which there is a uh, cyclic conjugated enone and allyl silane moiety is treated with titanium tetrachloride a Lewis acid a bicyclic ketone of this kind is formed which is an in 6 ohm. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The transition state involved in this reaction can be written up like this in which this particular part is a 
a half chair conformation and of course when Lewis acid interacts with the carbonyl oxygen we generate a delta positive at the carbon number 5 and then there is a reaction between this particular carbon atom and this carbon atom to form a CC bond because the cation that will be generated will be on this particular position which is beta to the silicon and therefore this beta silicon effect uh, guides the regioselective cyclization in this particular fashion and this loss of carbon silicon bond from here leads to the formation of this bicyclic product. It is also found that acetals and ketals are excellent substrates on which allyl and vinyl silanes can be added which are guided by beta silicon effect. If we take a substrate like this, a hemiacetal, and react with B of the etherate in the presence of an allyl silane, then this particular allylated product is formed. The reaction proceeds in this fashion that the hydroxy group gets knocked off by coordinating with the Lewis acid to form the oxonium ion of this kind to which allyl silane adds and then we get the allylated product which again is guided by the beta silicon effect. Similarly, if we take this acetal of this kind in which the allyl silane moiety is embedded, it upon treatment with tin tetrachloride loses one of the methoxy groups which first coordinates with the Lewis acid and then of course it gets expelled out to form this oxonium ion which then undergoes cyclization in such a fashion that the cation is generated beta to the silicon and then the carbon silicon bond breaks to release the cyclic molecule like this having an exomethene. Uh, now epoxidation of allyl silanes uh, can also be accomplished by uh, parasites. So you have uh, an allyl silane uh, of any kind that can be reacted uh, with a parasit to form allyl uh, epoxide of the allyl silane in this particular fashion and products of this kind or even from the vinyl uh, silane uh, you can also uh, generate uh, epoxides from vinyl silane and all these products all these epoxides lead to the formation of different kinds of ketones aldehydes or alkenes after select, uh, selective epoxide opening and elimination. Say you have an epoxide of this kind uh, and now this can uh, lead uh, to the formation of uh, an OH here and this double bond. So suppose if this is how it opens then you can get the uh, allyl alcohol and uh, this can be uh, converted to the ketone or aldehyde depending on what is the uh, substituent here. So if it is R1 then of course we get a ketone, if it is uh, uh, proton then of course we get aldehyde. So there are different ways by which the reaction can be uh, triggered or can be directed. Uh, now say for example if you have an epoxide and particularly from allyl silane then the intermediate epoxide as we shown it I have shown it here if the conditions of uh, the epoxidation are such that they allow the opening of the epoxy silane then of course this itself can undergo either uh, within the reaction or by the addition of say extra sulfuric acid. So with this gets protonated with sulfuric acid and this bond particularly breaks. Now there are two possibilities whether this bond breaks or this bond breaks but this bond breaks because you generate a positive charge on this carbon atom which is a beta carbon atom. So you have a possibility of beta carbocation formation and then of course the carbon silicon bond breaks and then you generate the corresponding double bond here. So this is how the, the opening of the uh, epoxide uh, allows a regioselective opening uh, in this fashion. Now the epoxide formation here has uh, taken place from the alpha side as you can see. The epoxide is formed from the alpha side that is because this uh, silicon bond here 
is a beta oriented and therefore to avoid the steric hindrance the epoxidation occurs from the alpha side. Now we can also uh, add uh, allyl silane to an aldehyde in such a uh, interesting fashion that if we take uh, an aldehyde and react with a allyl silane which is uh, made up of a cyclobutane ring then of course we can see that the aldehyde reacts uh, at this end which is the gamma end to form the uh, product of this type where this uh, uh, IC4H9 is basically this path here uh, aldehyde and this is the aldehydic part and therefore the reaction uh, allows the formation of this uh, uh, homoallyl alcohol. Now if we heat this particular substrate then of course this four member ring opens up to form this uh, diene of this kind and this diene is it's a useful diene for various kinds of uh, Diels order reactions. Now uh, another possibility is that uh, this uh, uh, aminium ions which can be generated uh, in an intramolecular fashion uh, can uh, trap uh, the allyl silanes. So if some example if you have a substrate of this kind and if you treat with trifluoroacetic acid this is another example of a Bronsted acid and the, the moment this gets protonated here uh, then what is happening is, uh, is that the lone pair of electrons from here to here. Uh, can push this out and once that happens then of course you have aminium ion of this kind where uh, sorry this is uh, uh, from here from here so now you have a positive charge at this particular position where the reaction occurs and of course it gives this particular product. Now uh, this uh, has uh, this particular substrate uh, also uh, another substrate they have been converted into two natural products this uh, 5, 5 compound has been converted to isoretronicanol and then 6, 6 member ring has been converted to epilupinine. It is something like this that this is the structure of the isoretronicol as you can see that there is uh, the this particular uh, compound when it undergoes cyclization as we uh, saw just now it formed this intermediate and then now you have to reduce the carb amide this lactam part uh, so you can do it by various different types of reducing agent for example you can also use uh, lithium aluminum hydride here and then one can get the corresponding CH2 group of the isoretronicanol. Now in a similar fashion uh, if we take a 6 member ring like this and uh, the possibility of uh, a reduction of uh, one of the two carbonyl groups it is uh, symmetrical and therefore once the reduction of one of them uh, takes place then we can generate in a similar fashion as we did the earlier case. So if uh, this undergoes a reduction uh, then of course you can generate uh, the corresponding uh, alcohol and that alcohol undergoes here this is what is going to form and then, then of course you have um, And then this will uh, interact with the trifluoroacetic acid and form the corresponding ammonium ion like this which undergoes cyclization from here like this from this carbon atom. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So you have a cyclization to take place in this fashion to form this intermediate and this intermediate can then be understood that the uh, uh, lead to the formation of this particular product. And uh, therefore um, uh, that uh, uh, particular product again 
has this lactam part and this lactam can be reduced to form the corresponding epilipinin. So, you have this intermediate uh, which undergoes a uh, cyclization uh, from the uh, lower part and therefore the hydrogen comes on the top. And uh, therefore, uh, the stereochemistry can be easily understood that uh, we have uh, uh, the uh, product with the desired stereochemistry. So, uh, we, uh, we will stop it at this uh, particular stage uh, today and look at the um, other uh, aspects of the uh, silane chemistry in the next class. Uh, if you wish you can also look at uh, this particular reference and uh, see the more details of this reaction. So, till then uh, take care and bye see you in the next class. Thank you.